Hey guys, what is up? I've got a video rendering in the background right now, so I figured I'd shoot this video real quick. Someone had asked me in a comment if I could go through and explain all the machines that I have and list off all the machines that I have. In the video that got that comment, I had said that I had 20 machines or 19 machines or something like that. That was a mistake because machines were labeled improperly in Vensoft, which I've gone and corrected. I actually have 15 machines, um, 14 of which are in service. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to tell you the names, makes and models of all the machines that I own, my favorite, my least favorite, stuff like that. And uh, hopefully you guys can learn something from it. Um, I'll also try to give you an idea on what I pay for each one of these machines as well. So uh, the first machine, I have three of these. This is Royal 660-9. Out of all the machines that I own, this is probably my favorite machine. It's a soda machine exclusively. Um, it can run cans, bottles. <clears throat> I think you can get shim kits for it, for it to run uh, um, Red Bull cans, which is something that's really hard to get, actually. Seems like, to me anyways. I don't have any Red Bull um, kits or anything like that in any of my machines. But the Royal 660 is a chain-driven uh, soda machine. It's got one engine or one motor that runs a chain drive that links up and hits uh, hits little levers that drop sodas. And uh, you can either run each column. And, well, the 660 has got 12 columns in total with nine selections. And you can assign each column to a button. Like you can assign, I've actually got one machine where I've got four columns assigned to one button. And uh, that's Mountain Dew, obviously. Mountain Dew sells everywhere. It is what it is. <laughs> um, we may be doing that with another machine as well. Uh, but uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff I can talk about on how that works. Uh, the Royal 660 machine uses a rod mechanism that uh, slides into two different holes so you can run bottles with one or cans with the other and uh, you don't have to replace any shims or pull any shims or change too much about the machines. Uh, my Royal 660-9s are the older models, um, RVCC 660-9. Uh, which means it's uh, got a can capacity of 660 cans with uh, nine different selections. Now, uh, I have paid $200 for one of them, $400 for one of them, and the other one was also $400. Uh, so that's roughly what those are worth. I'd say if you found one in really good condition, I would pay as much as $600 for one of those machines. Um, the next machine I'm going to talk about, I also have three of, and this is another Royal 660, but it's a Dash 8, RVCC 660 8 instead of Dash 9. The only real difference, like the bigger differences between these two machines, is on the motherboard of the Dash 9, more than likely you're going to have a red button motherboard. Uh, which is an older model of MDB and you have to change a couple things to make credit card re readers work on them. Um, I'll get more into that in later videos. The, uh, the Dash 8 has got all the same components that we just spoke about, but the Dash 8 has actually got only eight selections and it has a blue button motherboard, which is a bit more modern. It's got a more modern MDB setup and uh, when you when you connect your uh, credit card readers to these machines, the cash reporting is usually already good to go. With the older models, you have to turn something on in order for your cash reporting to go through. What I mean by cash reporting is uh, you have some software you can look at that tells you whether a cash sale took place or a credit sale took place remotely. So you can monitor the inventory of your machines wherever you are. It's pretty awesome. The, I use Nyack software and it's got to be my favorite out of all of them. Uh, the next machine we'll go into here is going to be a Dixie Narco. I have one Dixie Narco 501E. I've had a lot of trouble with the learning curve on these machines and I'm still learning about these machines. Um, the Dixie Narco 501E has, I need to stop and think about it, 
you can set up different configurations, but I have one wide column and I think I have nine slim columns. My one wide column is set up for cans for Coca-Cola. Um, all my other columns are set up for cans except for two in the back which are assigned to one button um, and those are both set up for bottles. If you want to change out bottles or cans with the uh, Dixie Narco 501E, you have to pull shims out of the bottom of the machine and replace them with the proper shim. Um, something else that's different with the Dixie Narco 501E is it has individual motors on each column. So there is a benefit to this and then there's a drawback to this. The benefit is if a motor goes, only one column's gone, the machine will still make money. As per the Royal, if the motor goes, the machine's down and needs to be repaired right then and there. With the Dixie Narco, it's a little bit different. You have more components, so that means there's more stuff that can break. That's the downside. But you have more components, so you have more fail-safes. It's, it's a give and take sort of situation. I have to say the learning curve on the Dixie Narco, in my experience, is significantly longer. It takes a lot longer to actually figure it out. And uh, the sold out mechanism on a Royal 660 is just a drop sensor. As to where the sold out mechanism on a Dixie Narco 501E does a little lever that the cans hold back. Uh, this is actually kind of a good design. So you have to put six cans in, you have to prime each column um, on a single column in order to get it to function properly. And the purpose of this is to make sure that cans that are coming out are always cold. With a Royal machine, cans are ready immediately. So if you fill a machine up after it's been empty and someone literally goes to buy a soda right after you fill it up, it might be warm because it might have been sitting in the van and been driving around in the heat or something like that. With a Dixie Narco, you've got six cans before it gets to the new product. So I can kind of see how that would be a win-win scenario. That's, uh, that's actually a decent, um, decent thing to have. The learning curve is probably the only drawback on the Dixie Narco 501E that I have to say. Um, Dixie Narco 501E is an MDB capable machine, so you can put credit card readers on it as well. Um, moving on to snack machines now. I've got a bit more of a wide variety on snack machines. I have an AP113, which needs a board upgrade to accept credit card readers. And uh, the shelves on these machines plug into outlets in the back. So when you pull the shelf out to fill it up, that shelf is not plugged in at all. I love this because we'll talk about another machine later that creates problems by having a wire harness. Uh, so these are free floating shelves and when you push them back in, they plug back into their designated area. They're metal shelves. They're built very, very well. I'm not entirely sure, but I think AP was American made. I'm pretty sure that AP left production in 2007. Um, the next machine I have is an AP6000. This is like a 30 year old machine. Very old, uh, does not currently have a board upgrade but will be getting a board upgrade. You can get new front faces on these machines too to make them look like they're not from the 70s, uh, which they are. <laughs> but uh, overall, these are workhorse machines. They're very, very reliable machines. They've got metal shelving. The shelving plugs in, they've got fans inside the machine, so if it's in a warm spot, uh, to an extent, you can get these fans running and the fan will try to cool the product. Uh, if it gets too hot, you, you need to move the machine. Uh, these are not cold machines, and they won't work like that. Um, one of my favorite machines is a Crane GPL 160. Um, this has got plastic shelving, however, plastic shelving in this machine is built very, very well. Um, this machine also has a wire harness, which is kind of a drawback, but in this machine specific case, it's designed very well and uh, doesn't get hung up anywhere and you don't run into any problems. 
Um, overall, I have never had an issue with my crane machine. I've never had an issue with any of my AP machines. Um, the next machine is a USI 3015A. This is a five wide machine. When I say five wide, on the top, on the top shelf you've got five spirals in it. I should probably mention that about the other machines too. The AP113 is a five wide, the AP6000 is a four wide, the Crane GPL is a four wide, and the uh, USI 3015A is a four, five wide. Um, this machine hasn't really broken on me. However, there are some things about this machine that have started to bother me a little bit. The plastic shelving on the 3015A is pretty cheap. It's flimsy, it bends really easily. Um, so if you get a full shelf, it likes to bend in and fall off the track. So you get kind of like an angle shelf. Uh, it's not my favorite. The uh, motors are held in place by a little slot top on the back that's got knurled um, bolts that go into it. And uh, that's fine and dandy. When you pull the shelves out, the wire harness that goes through the back of that has this horrible habit of getting caught on the shelf above it or below it, depending on where the wire harness is. And I have to say, this bugs me so much. I really don't like the fact that it does it, but it does. It happens. Um, the 305A that I have needs a board upgrade. It is currently running a 112 fill validator made by Coinco. Um, the next machine is a Another USI 3085. This is a three wide machine. This is a narrow machine. Um, similar problems with the shelving. We have same problems with the shelving. Uh, does need a board upgrade. Uh, it's currently running a Coinco bill validator as well. And uh, as far as vending product goes, I haven't really had any issues with it. Another issue I did have with this machine is uh, the door flap broke on me, so I had to repair that. Um, outside of that, it's a decent looking machine. The buttons have always done good for me and the display looks okay. Uh, we're going to move on to combo machines now. We're going to talk a little bit about combo machines here. Um, I have two combo machines. Both of them are USI FSI. Um, USI and FSI are pretty much, they're the same company. There's, you can read into that if you want somewhere. But uh, what it is, is there are two machines. You got a soda, a soda machine and a snack machine. But they're connected to each other. The snack machine has a bill validator on it and a coin mechanism. And then it's pigtailed to the soda machine and the soda machine's its own unit. Uh, but in order to buy something from the soda machine, you insert the dollar bill to the snack machine. Um, I actually really like this setup. I don't know why I like it so much, but you run into the same problems with these machines as you do the other USI snack machines. You have the cords hanging up. Uh, something that started to irritate me a little bit with one of them one of them is designed specifically for cans, and this is the one that I have in service. The other one's not in service right now. Um, it has got roll away, it's got like a little roll away thing where the cans go. Now, if you don't catch the can on every single curve, you run the risk of cans exploding on the way down because they catch something the wrong way. Particularly Coca-Cola cans and Diet Coke cans. Um, Surprisingly, other cans made by Coca-Cola don't have that problem. It's literally just Coke and Diet Coke that I've had this issue with, but you definitely want to be careful when you're rolling those down on those machines. Um, and my last machine is a coffee machine. It is a LE303V. This is a Chinese machine that was uh, sent to me by someone who wanted me to market the machine. Um, I was pretty clear that uh, if the machine wasn't any good, I wasn't really going to market it. The machine is horrible. There are a huge amount of problems with this machine. 
the uh, everything's plastic except for the housing itself of the machine. The housing itself is very thin metal. Uh, it's not very well built. The uh, heating unit seems to work fine. Um, and the cup dispenser works fine. There's a huge problem there though, is the cups that are designed to fit in this dispenser are not made in America anywhere. So you have to order them from Korea. That takes like a couple weeks. I think it took three weeks for me to get a box of them. Um, the machine has a bit of a problem accepting money is where the problem is. So you can only program the machine to accept one type of coin. So I, I obviously went with quarters because I want to sell it for 75 cents a cup because cups are tiny. Another problem, cups are wicked small. They're not 12 ounce cups uh, like the American standard is. The machine overall, it looks really good. Um, the operation of the machine is horrible. Horrible operation. If you, uh, if you shut the machine off, well, the machine I received, come to find out that uh, there are ways around it, but the machine I received and worked with, I had to reprogram a few things and put a Raspberry Pi in it. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a small motherboard that controls a couple things. Um, you know, with a little bit of Python code, you can fix problems. Uh, so, this machine, when you shut it off, did not save any settings that you set. So, you shut the machine off and turn it back on, and now you're selling them. You're selling the uh, cups for one coin. And your one coin is 25 cents, and you're just not going to make any money on that at all. But uh, that's the entire list of all the machines I currently own. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. At this point in time, you can go ahead and click on one of these or subscribe if you haven't already. All right, still here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna wait around this time. Uh.